I'm Jane Thomas and I would like to talk to you today about faith and mental illness. Well, firstly, mental illness has nothing to do with evil spirits or demonic possession. The teachings of the Old Testament, where such messages are rife, cannot be accepted at face value. They have to be put in historical context. Mental illness as spirit possession is or should be historically defunct. A mental illness is as valid an illness as a broken leg. Its debilitating effects are just as real. Doctors claim mental illnesses like schizophrenia are down to levels of serotonin in the brain, for example. But mental illness cannot be tested for. There is no blood sample or brain scan for it at present, and it has therefore a very arbitrary status. The industry built up around mental illness, the hospitals, the doctors, nurses, community workers and drugs companies, allow the current suffocating model of treatment to exist. We are not too far from Victorian times, where unwed mothers and people with learning disabilities would be locked away here in St David's. We are still locking people up just for being ill, and that should stop. We are also forcibly medicating people, which is another violation of human rights. I am travelling to Trieste, Italy with Howard Bar Health Authority later this month to study a model of care which has no locked doors and no forcible medication and where those who are feeling the effects of mental illness can use drop-in centres or nighttime hospitality suites under their own aegis. In Trieste, the stigma around mental illness is so reduced that people are not afraid to address their own state of mind. I am diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, which can come under the label bipolar, so I tell people I am bipolar rather than schizophrenic. They get less scared by the bipolar diagnosis. I have psychotic episodes, and I stress that psychotic is not the same as psychopathic, which some people seem to think. I have delusions, sometimes paranoid delusions. I hear things, I smell things, and I feel things touching me that are not there. Auditory, olfactory, and kinesthetic delusions. Because I have been brought up a Christian, my delusions have at time reflected this. For example, I was on a ferry travelling from Ireland, when I heard Silvio Berlusconi, the one-time Italian president, talking to me from the sky. He had been made Pope and was telling me to throw all my money in the sea for the fishes, and I did throw £100 into the water. I thought afterwards, trying to make sense of the action, that it was a little like the story of the expensive oil poured on Christ's feet. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard and expensive perfume she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Perhaps there was a message in my madness that the love of money is the root of all evil, or perhaps it was a purely nutty thing to do. We must learn what lessons we can from our lives. There is no doubt in my mind that my work as a newspaper editor and my ambition and materialism led in part to my illness, though there was a psychologically abusive relationship to consider also. But in many ways, when my illness started, I had lost touch with God. I was driving a new Alfa Romeo, speeding through life on a very good salary, expenses, lunches out, travel tips as perks, taking four foreign holidays a year and living the high life in every sense of the word. I had lost touch with my family roots and barely had time for my friends. All the deeper things that seemed to matter in my childhood, including a love of God, had been crowded out by the desire for money, status through work and greater highs. It just could not last. Following my breakdown, I was forced to rebuild my life from the bottom up and took great comfort from the scriptures. My old religious education teacher recently told me the scriptures are the best source of human psychology upon this planet. It is truly tragic that they are so neglected as a guide for happiness. And I have found this to be true. At one particularly taxing time in the mental hospital, 
when I was bemoaning the fact that I could no longer afford the designer labour clothes I had been wearing, I came across a Gideon Bible that fell open at Matthew chapter 6. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today alive and tomorrow thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what we shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. It was probably just the book falling open at a well-worn page, but I took it as a sign nonetheless. Then there is come to me all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30 Wonderful words, poetic and charming, that really convey a powerful message of love, comfort and hope. And at times during my illness I have been without hope lost in that dark waiting room of death, despair. In my case, I think despair was a product of selfish thoughts and actions and a dislocation and failure to empathise with my fellow human beings. Though all these things have also been described to me as a feature of the illness rather than a cause. I don't know which is true, but I do know that the revolutionary view of Jesus, his turn-the-other-cheek philosophy, in direct opposition to an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, resonated with me at a time when nothing else could. It is reiterated in Matthew 5, verse 42, If anyone forces you to go one mile, go two with him. Today I am well. My last hospital stay was two years ago. I work on a purely voluntary basis to improve the lot of psychiatric patients and uphold their rights. I am a trustee of a mental health advocacy charity. I sit on the Mental Health Legislation Assurance Committee. I give talks to David Powers Police on sectioning and how to improve it, and I do many other things within the mental health field. I also go to church on a Sunday, St Martin's Lawn, a beautiful rural church. I am on the PCC and diocesan representative for the parish. I also appreciate fully all the love and practical help my family has given me, standing by me through the years of illness when I could not see them through the mists of bipolar. I even have a partner called Sarah, who I love dearly. God has been good to me, and every day I wake up, I feel blessed.